Hey hackers, Blue Cosmo from CCS here and welcome back to the channel. Today is part three of building an ethical hacker EDC. And EDC of course stands for everyday carry. Today in this episode, I'm gonna show you guys not only why you shouldn't leave your computer unlocked, but why it's very important to use password managers. Because I'm gonna show you guys how easy it is to exfiltrate web credentials by using the Bash Bunny. And also we got the black and red because it's the colors of the Bash Bunny. We gotta represent it right. But before we dive into that, I have to do, you know, the YouTube law. Quick disclaimer, do not use any of the practices I show you unethically. This is just to show and teach you how easy it is to exfiltrate all your web credentials if you're leaving your computer unlocked and if you're not using a password manager. So please do not do any of this unethically. If you're not in the cybersecurity profession, then <laughs> don't do this. Otherwise, enjoy the video and uh, let's head over to my Linux screen and we can uh, start building the payload. Hey hackers, so we can go ahead and take our Bash Bunny, put it in arming mode and plug it into our computer. While that's loading, let's go ahead and actually build the web credential uh, stealer exfiltrator payload. And uh, let's head over to our web browser. And um, oh, what's this? This is just the... Um, Cosmodium CS website. This is the newest article that came out. The Primoth article that came out. Feel free to uh, <laughs> check it out. A uh, link will be in the description. Um, Get a load of this guy. But no, in all seriousness, this is nursoft.net. It has a bunch of recovery tools and network monitoring tools. What we're going to do is go to the password recovery utilities and we're going to see this web browser pass view. Click on that. I'll probably just link the link to this web page in the description and on the GitHub as well. Take a look at this image, right? So I'm sure most of you guys use Chrome or Firefox where you can save your passwords onto the web browser, right? And the web browser will autofill them for you. That's great and all, but except it's not great and all because although your browser is saving it to the cloud, it is also saving it onto your computer in a certain file within your app data folder, I believe. And what this program is doing is basically going through all those files and just showing the passwords that your web browser has saved onto your computer. So if you're using a password manager, you won't have to worry about this because the passwords aren't being saved onto your computer. So let's go ahead and use this program to actually use that as an exploit, right? And use that vulnerability, I guess, as an exploit, right? So we're gonna go ahead, zoom back out of here and we can go to the bottom of the web page where you'll see this zip file. And we're gonna go ahead and click on the zip file right here. Let that download. Then we can head over to our terminal. Our terminal is already in our EDC uh, directory where we've been making all the other projects. So you see I have the uh, rubber ducky right here. So let's make our bash bunny uh, payload. Bash bunny, right? We can CD into the bash bunny and or change directories into the bash bunny and we will make a directory and we'll call this uh web tech credential i think that's a cool name and we can change our directory into the web credential directory and then clear everything because that terminal was getting too big right so what we're going to do is move our uh downloads whoops downloads and then the web browser zip file that we just downloaded. I'm gonna move it into our current directory. There you go. And uh, if we list, you can see we have the zip file right there. So let's go ahead and unzip the web browser file. And it's gonna ask us for a password. Right underneath the link to download the web browser um, exfiltrator or web, cre web credential exfiltrator is the password. So you guys can go ahead and copy that and uh, head over to your terminal and paste it in there. Great, so we can clear this. And now if we list, we can see that we have the appropriate files in here. So let's go ahead and delete the zip file because we, um, we already unzipped it. And then we're gonna go ahead and rename our exe file in our chm file because we want our pay payload to be quick and if we are gonna use the bash bunny to run this file, we don't want to type all this out, all right? So we're going to just change the name 
of the web browser.exe file and we're going to rename it to capital P.exe. And then we're going to do the same thing for the chm file. Uh, .chm. Clear? And if we list, you can see we have a capital P.chm, P.exe, and then our readme or whatever. So let's go ahead and touch a file. We'll call this payload.txt. And we are also going to need a ducky tag script. Dot txt because the um, bash bunny can run ducky script so we're just going to use that as a way to um, get the payload done. so let's go ahead and add them our current directory so now it's actually time for us to start building the payload finally right so we can actually build something to steal all these passwords off the web browser so we're going to head over to the payload.txt file and uh, it should be zoomed in enough for you guys but I'll zoom in a little bit more just in case and the first thing we want to do is do our LED setup. I'm just going to say that um, the LED status is just showing that we're setting up to do the payload, right? We're going to do a get switch position, and this gets whatever position the switch is on, right? The switch on the bash button. Um, I'm going to separate it by LED positions. Then we're going to do an attack mode. Uh, HID storage and if you don't know what this means you know, I don't know if you remember me mentioning how the bash bunny can pretend to be other devices and mimics other devices well the bash bunny we can set its attack mode to an HID storage or human interface device storage so something like a USB drive or a micro SD card basically right um, the last thing we're going to do is uh, go ahead and actually, no, that's it. So we can LED stage one, because now we're in stage one. And we're going to use the quack command to run ducky script. And then we're going to get our variable for the switch position. And then we're going to parse it into this path for the ducky script file. So ducky script.txt. And then we're going to do a quack for the longest delay we can do, which I believe is 10 seconds or 10,000 milliseconds, right? Um, then we can do an LED finish to let the pro um, user know that the program is done. All right. So that should be it. So we can save this and close this. We can do a control backslash to open this panel up. And we're going to open our ducky script.txt file. All right. Now, um, my Adam has our uh, ducky script already enabled in here or ducky script syntax highlighting. So we're going to enable that. And the next thing we're going to do is actually build the ducky script, right? So we can go ahead and make a comment here saying exfiltrate web passwords uh, to a USB twin duck or bash bunny this will work with all three you just have to configure it right all right and we can give ourselves some credit created by cosmo so if you guys don't know ducky script then that's okay um i have a video up here i'll link and in the description and on the web page, on the github repository on how to use the usb rubber ducky and i literally go over everything you need to know and how to use it so feel free to check that out. Again, it'll be in all of those places where you can find it, all right? So we're gonna do this by, we're gonna have that good uh, ducky etiquette and let our computer recognize our bash bunny. And then we can delay for about 1000 sec or 1000 milliseconds, so one second. We're going to open PowerShell through the run box, right? And we can do that syntax. So GYR and delay for about 200 string, whoops, string, whoops, string PowerShell. And then we can hit the enter key, delay for about 300 milliseconds. And then we are going to change our directory um, into the bash bunny. All right. 
and we're also going to need to add our path to the clipboard only because we're going to be saving all those passwords we get from the executable file. So we need to know what path we need to save it to, right? So we can go ahead and string. Um, so I don't know if you guys remember if you saw the previous video, but we basically used this syntax um, to change our directory into a drive labeled a certain name. And we're going to go ahead and get that. So we're going to cat um, out of here, out of here into our rubber ducky um, and then our payload dot txt. Go ahead and copy this. Again, you don't have to do anything right now. You guys can just take the code off of the GitHub page. So we're gonna paste this into here and let's go ahead and hit the enter key, right? We're going to delay for about uh, 200 milliseconds. Then we can do a string and then a make directory because we're going to make a directory where we can save our loop in our loop directory on the bash bunny. Then we can name that file after the username of the person's computer. We can do an enter and then we can delay for about another 200 milliseconds. We're going to string and we're going to change our directories into the payloads directory and then switch one because I want this to be on switch one. And then we can go ahead, whoops, and then hit enter and then delay for another 200 milliseconds. And then we can do a string. And then basically what we're going to do in here is save the path of this loop file to our clipboard, all right? So we're going to do a string and then the u.name because this gets the drive letter, right? This u.name is the drive letter in which we actually need to change this to bash bunny in all caps because that's the name of my drive. So we can do a u.name and then we can con concatenate it to a loot backslash because that's how PowerShell works, I guess, with the backslashes and then add it to a environment variable from the user's name. All right. And then we can just save it to our clipboard. All right. Now, the last thing we should do for this stage is just hit the enter key. Great. So now what we've done is open PowerShell, get the drive letter um, and change or change directories into the bash bunny by getting the drive letter for anything labeled bash bunny. Then we're going to make a directory in the loop folder named after the computer's username. Then we're going to change our directories into switch one. And then we're going to copy the path to the loop folder onto our clipboard. Okay. That's all we've done. Now we can go ahead and uh, run our p.exe file. All right. And then we're going to save the credential credentials uh, to our bash bunny or to loot folder in clipboard, right? Oh, did I spell clipboard wrong? I forgot the A. There you go. Um, let's go ahead and delay for about 100 milliseconds. We can go ahead and do a string. We're going to do a dot slash P exe to run it and then we are going to exit as soon as it finishes running or as soon as we run it right so we can go ahead and whoops i forgot the g in the string then we'll hit the enter key we can delay for about i would say 1800 milliseconds should be fine you know what we'll just do a two second because the exe is super quick, but I don't know how long it's actually going to take. So we can do some testing there. So we can do a control A to select all the passwords and then a control S to save all the passwords, right? Then it's going to open up the file explorer asking us where we want to save it. So now it's going to ask us where we want to save it by opening up that file explorer window. So we're going to call the file uh, pw.txt, all right? 
and then we are going to alt D in order to search for a certain location where we want to save the file. We're going to paste in the location that we created. We're going to hit the enter key and then we are going to alt S to save. We can delay for a little bit to let the file um, file explorer close. And then the last thing we need to do is just alt F4 to uh, end the program or to end our web to end the p.exe program uh, from running. So we can just do an alt F4 and that should be it. All right. We can go ahead and select all of these and copy it. We'll go to our bash bunny. We'll go to our payloads, switch number one and just paste all of that in there. And now all we have to do is configure the exe and then we can use the script. All right, guys, so before we can actually run our payload, put it back in an army mode so that way we can configure the XC so that way we can just plug it into anybody's computer and it will run. <laughs> right, so let's head over to my screen. Before I plug in our uh, Bash Bunny to exfiltrate our web credentials, I just want to say if the program is not working, just extend the delays because the program does work, but depending on your computer, um, I know Windows will try to detect to see if the keystrokes are too fast. They'll sometimes try to stop it, at least on my computer. So just extend the delays a little bit if it is giving you any trouble. So let's go ahead and plug in the Bash Bunny. I'm looking for a port. There you go. And it's backwards. Whoops. So we plugged it in. We're going to wait for the little Windows noise to let us know that it's successfully connected and everything. And while it does that, there you go. Cool. So then it should open up PowerShell and do its thing. Open up PowerShell. You get this. It saved. Oh, snap. What? No way. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So if I open up um, my file explorer and go onto our bash button, we'll go into the loot directory. All right, so we have the Wade file which is the name of my computer, and we have a pw.txt. And I'm going to have to blur this out because, wow. Okay, so it, uh, it works. <laughs> I can tell you that. <laughs> uh, yep, all right. Get usernames and passwords. Um, yeah, but none of my accounts that are connected to my, uh, password manager are on here. Luckily for me, because if I go like control F, I'll do like hack the box. Yeah, exactly. It's not on here. Yeah. Okay. So, um, use this responsibly or hopefully don't use this at all. Um, <laughs> Yeah, this is, wow. Okay, how many lines are in this file? 2,420 lines. Wow. All right, so that worked. Um, you can, you know, just plug this into anybody's computer and get at least, you know, 2,400 lines worth of credentials. Dang, it even tells you the password strength. <laughs> it's just like weak. And this is, this one is very strong. So it does, the funny thing about this too is like, even if you have the world's most secure password, if you're not storing it right, you know, it can still be exfiltrated as quickly as I did it. Wow, okay. So let me uh, go to my face here and kind of give you guys the talk, right? So first of all, this password, this password uh, website exfiltration attack cannot be possible if your computer is unlocked, right? Because I have to plug in the USB drive or the bash bunny into there in order for it to get all your credentials, right? So don't leave your computer unlocked. Just hit the Windows key L. Just hold down the Windows key, hit L before you leave. It will just lock your computer. You can come back, type your password in, and everything will still be there, right? Um, Second thing, use a password manager. 
please use the password manager. Things like Bitwarden, LastPass, Dashlane. Consider those options because they don't save your password onto your computer for programs like this to exfiltrate them, right? So hopefully this was pretty cool. Now you guys know how easy it is for somebody to literally walk up to your computer and steal your entire digital life. <laughs> So please be responsible with this. This is just to kind of teach you guys the importance and the dangers about, you know, how important your passwords are. Um, so please leave a like on this video, you know, make sure to share it because this is unfortunately the end. But in part four is, I believe, the last part. And I might do kind of like a uh, montage of the kit because in the next part, we're going to actually finally be building the actual EDC, how I'm going to carry everything around, how I'm going to, you know, effectively be able to use these things. I might even do some sort of tests and things like that, but that's going to be part four. So I'll see you guys over there. But in the meantime, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, comment, share, do the whole YouTube algorithm thing, because videos like this, I think are pretty entertaining for you guys. And I think you guys enjoy this kind of content. So I will see you guys over there and, uh, Stay happy, stay positive, and uh, as always, happy hacking.